let's let's back up just for a second and talk a little bit about how um, somebody who's kind of an alcohol and drug researcher, yeah. um, like myself, um, gets into the brewing industry. Didn't you start as a uh, kind of a home brewer? Yeah, I, I kind of you know I, I had a you know I went as I went through high school and, and college I had a, an affinity for beer as most young men do uh, but wasn't really uh, you know the craft beer scene was was pretty nascent you know in the late 90s early 2000s um, and so it really wasn't until I came out to um, San Diego in 2006 is when I really kind of realized kind of really the the, the breadth of, of beers and breweries out there and I remember Ale Smith was one of the first breweries I went to where I I remember having their IPA and being blown away and their grand crew and I got growlers of both of them and I took them home and I just had dreams about how great this beer was. And you mentioned collaborations. Um, in terms of kind of the brewing scene in San Diego, it seems like there's less competition and more collaboration or kind of a community around it than yeah. you might expect if you were kind of looking at any other industry where it'd be cutthroat. Yeah. I, I think that's that's as long as I've been sort of privy to the industry and, and known people in it, that seems to really kind of go back decades, right? It's, it's kind of this, uh, you know, kind of this home brewer mentality where I think, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, there weren't uh, brewery supply stores. There weren't easy way to get equipment. And so people who are interested in it, kind of the, the sort of the initial sort of pioneers in this area really depend on each other for, um, bouncing ideas off of and uh, sharing ideas and sharing beers and getting feedback um, and so it's always been a very um, uh, friendly industry and I think that's still the case today I think there's a lot more breweries now than there were obviously um, but I, it's something that we enjoy doing and a lot of breweries enjoy doing have a chance to either have other brewers come here and share some of their skills and techniques with us and do a fun beer together or to, to go out to other breweries and so you know, it's just one of those things that is kind of bizarre. You don't see this in a lot of other consumer sectors um, in terms of this sort of an almost cross-pollination or, or just sharing. The other thing I was curious about kind of was, um, you know, I'm you know, 55 years old. I've been drinking beer like you since high school. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things they do teach you in Catholic school, by the way, back <laughs> then it was how to drink. Um, but, you know, IPA wasn't really the the big thing you know yeah. people would drink lagers or pilsners or and then it's kind of like and i remember in college drinking uh, sierra nevada and a couple hoppy beers yeah. uh but now man that seems to be like the go-to for connoisseurs can you talk a little bit about that and how we ended up there yeah it's uh you know it's been a growing style you know kind of just looking for evidence of that the gabf you kind of looking at seeing what categories professional brewers were entered in the top two this year by huge margin was IPA and hazy IPA hazy IPA actually just debuted there last year so it's only the second year they've done it um, but there's hundreds and hundreds of entries in those two most competitive areas so we know this is not just a little local or regional thing this is national like you're saying and so it's been an evolution and again I think it's it's got origins in the west coast um, you mentioned Sierra Nevada, Sierra Nevada pale ale which is kind of one of the beers and the breweries that you point to as kind of really kick-started this focus this change in the paradigm and sort of hot bitterness right we have a table beer in front of us here this is called de la mesa it's really um, nice so this is a, a clean crisp uh belgian style table beer it came in a little bit higher than we wanted to Bel table beers are uh kind of a niche uh style that we don't really see too much in the in the u.s um there is one brewery here that did it really well benchmark brewing they unfortunately closed last year um, and actually, our, our assistant brewer Mike is, was from Bel uh, from Benchmark. Uh, he worked with them for a while, and so this is a chance. It's a 4.6% beer. It's got some of that um, uh, again, sort of Belgian beer kind of phenols and flavors, um, but uh, very very crushable. Um, again, someone who maybe not have as much experience. This is something that they could try and have. Might have some flavors there they can really enjoy. So if you if people wanted to to try your beer beyond coming in here, which I do recommend, yeah. But um, how how else can 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 folks find you and? and well, it's a, it's a little tough. It, it's best to come here, come check it out. Um, we do have some draft accounts around town. Um, it's one of those things where we don't currently can or bottle any of our beers, um, but we do have connections. We do have um, you know people out there in the industry that we love to work with that have great beer facilities, beer bars, and so. Uh, we'll send our beer to O'Brien's and, and uh, Curdy Mesa. 
um, Hamilton's down in uh, South Park, um, small bar down in uh, uh, University Heights. Um, so, you know, uh, we try to kind of get some get our beer out there to our friends who, you know, it's, it's kind of the top tier of, of beer bars around here. Um, other than that, if, if you're close to any of the Whisk and Ladle restaurants, so again, Catania and Whisk and Ladle are both in La Jolla Cove, they have our beers, the New Park Commons, which is just a you know, half mile away from here. They're going to have all our beers. Um, but, you know, we'll see what the future holds. We may kind of expand out a little bit more, but, you know, we definitely like to, you know, get, get our beer out there and uh, get feedback from people. We, we have some fun accounts that, um, you know, there's a, uh, there's a barbecue place called BT's. Have mm-hmm. you heard of BT's? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Brad at BT's has been one of our strongest supporters. And gosh, I think, aren't they? They're in Santee, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're nowhere near this, but just from day one, uh, I think Skip met him. Skip's gone there a few times. Um, he's just one of our accounts that's out there that we just send beer to, and, and they love it there, and we get great feedback from him. And so there's a sushi place in Carmel Valley that our COO is friends with, and so they love our beer. And so we have all these little interesting pockets, but by far and away, especially if you want to try the range, uh, make a trip out here to Serena Mesa. We're not too far from anything. Try out some food, try out some beer, enjoy the beer garden, and um, yeah, we'd be excited to have you. Now, it's so far, are these visual things the only effects you find? No. What other effects? It's all to do with colour, it's all to do with round, with shape. Yeah, it's also... It's, uh, everything's colour.